After hours and fast money last night, Dan, I was watching the story unfold and seeing the stock react. It was up as much as seven plus percent in the after hour session today, only to be flat. And I'm wondering um, why you thought, why you think there's such enthusiasm as the announcements were made and, and what sort of dawned on investors and analysts as time went on? Well, we hear about that rational exuberance. Everybody was very excited at the initial announcement. We've been hearing endlessly about this global semiconductor shortage. We haven't had a whole lot of answers. Uh, some people probably jumped to think that this was going to solve problems more quickly, that it might more immediately impact the bottom line for Intel, uh, when really we're looking at something that's going to have a big impact for Intel from 2023 and beyond. But in the short run, the company still has a lot of execution hurdles, needs to get its uh, seven nanometer into market more quickly, um, needs to deal with shortages, continue to maintain strong market share positions, and continue to you know, prove to investors that under uh, new CEO Pat Gelsinger that the company is going to step by step and day by day execute in a way that it's really not been able to do over the past decade. So the stock is, is up 27 percent year to date, Dan, already on this hope that Intel is is in the midst of a turnaround. Is this where the stock should be right now? Or do you think Stacey Raskin over at Bernstein had this notable headline, cheap value, um, that basically this is a, a cheap stock and there is some upside here with Pat Gelsinger at the helm. Yeah, as an industry guy, uh, you know, Stacy's great at looking at pricing. And obviously, I, I listened to his commentary in the last hour, and, and he was pretty bearish overall. I think the run-up has been on the fact that people have been waiting for Intel to come out and clearly articulate what the strategy is. You know, you're looking at a company that still has 90% of the server market, 80% of the notebook market, has made gains in adjacencies, um, whether it's been network, IoT, automotive. And overall, it's performed pretty strong in terms of its EPS and, you know, its, uh, you know, times earnings ratio has been pretty low in comparison to others in the industry. But that's been because of failures to deliver on some things. And people have, have really looked harshly upon those failures. And Gelsinger has been pretty humble about it. He's humbly saying, we need to execute day by day. I had the chance to ask a question about what that inflection moment is going to be for the company. And he really said it's each day and each week and each moment that the company is going to need to be able to deliver on its promises. And so what he's saying is a reason for some enthusiasm, throwing the whole kitchen sink, as I think John Fort said about it. But now the market needs to see execution. And so the run up under Pat has been, uh, you know, has, has been deserved on certain execution and on certain promise. But now people are going to look for those results. And I think the uh, new strategy is very encouraging. It's exciting. But people want to see results. So how big a bet is this personally for the new CEO and how big a bet is it for the company? It's not, it doesn't feel like a bet the company kind of move, but it, certainly his, his tenure is going to be defined by how this turns out. Yeah, I believe this is a really big uh, inflection point for the company. I mean, we've had a moment where everybody's been raising their hand saying, who's going to solve the semiconductor shortage issue that we've had over the past several months? Um, and Intel's raising its hand. It's doing it without any guaranteed federal subsidy. It's putting a 20 billion capex commitment to build multiple uh, fabs in Arizona. It's, I believe, looking at that opportunity to both meet its leading edge process nodes, as well as to build this Intel Foundry service that could provide, as Gelsinger said in his comments right before I came on, a hundred billion market opportunity for the company um, to pursue. And so he's looking at growth. He's looking at opportunity. You have a uh, new process. Uh, nodes in three and five nanometer. You have competitors from ARM that are coming into market. And now as a foundry, mm -hmm. the company can say, hey, we can play in those spaces. We may not be the ones designing and putting those chips out as Intel chips, but with the foundry service, we can work with Qualcomm and ARM and we can work with NVIDIA and other companies and potentially uh, diversify revenue and diversify risk. So up front, it's a big investment and it's a big risk. But I think if you're really listening to what he's saying, he's saying we want to be able to pursue all the markets. We want to use our leading research facilities along with IBM, whom they uh, partnered with in their announcements yesterday, and say, let's figure out a way to attack more of the market. And concurrently, though, the company has to focus on how do they keep those big market shares they have, that 90 percent in server and that 80 percent in CPU, and even right. try to grow those in 2022 and 23 while this strategy is being implemented. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.